Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to be looking at is how to set up a photo for print. Now, I have two images from a Gettysburg project that I'm working on, and one is in black and white and the other is in color. Obviously, you can see that. But the reason why I want to share this is sometimes you want to print at home, which is what we're going to focus on. But the process is going to be the exact same if you want to send to a print lab. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one that we'll start with is the black and white, because I think that that one has a little bit more uh, nuance to it that we'll talk about. I've already edited this photo and the very first thing you have to do whenever you edit a photo is determine if you're going to print the image. Now, I knew that when I was working on these images, I was going to print them. So I actually started working in a way that allowed me to preserve the shadows and the highlights. What does that mean? If you look over here at the histogram, on the far left, you have your blacks and on the far right, you have your whites. Now, just to the inside of both of those. So to the left here, I would have my highlights and you can see I just got a ton of information in my highlights. And then over here on the far left, I have a good amount of information in my shadows. Now, to get a visual look at that, if you move your mouse over the image, where your magnifying glass is or wherever your cursor is, it's going to do a reading. And this is showing me that I have red 217, green 217 and blue 217 in this area. And this appears to be the brightest portion of the image. Now, if this was 255 or 256, then I would be concerned that this is gonna blow out. And when I go for print, it's not going to look very good, especially if you're using a home printer. So this image is actually doing pretty good. I'm just hovering over to see what issues I have. Everywhere that it's bright, it looks pretty good. Now, you can go into the shadow area, like down here, and you can see that there's some actual color information down there, so I'm not blowing anything out. Another way that you can check is by clicking these little clipping indicators. Now, there's some areas right here, because I didn't actually look over these, to see if those are getting blown out. And what I want to do is recover these, because the monitor has a backlight, and if the computer is telling me that these are pure black, it's just going to be pure black ink there, which could be perfectly fine. The problem is it may get a little muddled and you'll lose texture and definition. So all I'm going to do is pull up on my blacks and see if that solves that problem, which it does. And there we go. Now, the downside to this is what you're looking at on your computer, unless you have a calibrated monitor that is extremely expensive and uh, they are designed to show you what the print is going to look like you're going to, it's going to look a little less dynamic in its contrast. But when you print this, it's going to come out theoretically the way that you've edited it. So it's okay to edit your image and then come back and pull on your uh, blacks and whites. Now, I don't have any whites blown out in this image, which is great to ensure that you don't have any whites blown out in your images moving forward. What you want to do, or at least just a little trick that I've learned, is you come to your effects, you add a filter, and you add a curves filter. And all you're going to do is pull down on your curves, uh, your highlight, or your whites, because that's what this represents. You're just going to pull that down just a little bit. And what that does is, if you pay attention to the histogram over here, as I pull this down, you can see that the histogram is moving. And what that's doing to the image is actually moving the white point to a place where there's a little bit more tonal reference and, and value in the image. You don't have to fully understand this to be able to do this trick uh, because you're not moving it down all the way over here. All right. You're just moving it down just a little bit 
So that way the printer has some information that it can say, okay, there is a color. I need to put some ink on the paper. Otherwise, you're going to have gaps in your image, especially with a black and white. You don't want that. You want the printer to put ink on the paper. This is going to make sure that the printer puts ink on the paper. Now, the last thing that you may want to do when, or I guess a few last things, is checking for dust spots. So I'm going to click on retouch and I'm going to click on visualize dust and this my image sensor is pretty clean so i don't see any dust spots on this particular image and the reason you want to check for these is as soon as you turn these pixels into an actual image you are going to get some dust spots and it's not going to be pretty so let me zoom in here and it looks like i have a few dust spots uh, over here on the left side of this particular image so I'm just going to click one time, that's going to go away, and I'll get rid of a few of these, but your image is obviously going to vary with what you may have as a dust spot. And this isn't a, a terrible thing, this doesn't mean like your camera's bad, unless you got dust spots over the entire thing, uh, then that just means you need to clean your sensor. Now, we'll go ahead and hit Command Zero to zoom out. So now that I have a clean image, and I know that there's no dust spots. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck my visualized dust. Look around, make sure there's no distractions, which I already did that during the editing process. And I'm just going to hit done with my retouching tool. Now, the last thing that I would do is add in a little bit of sharpness. Now, I know that a lot of people are going to have different methods and you have to experiment with what you want to do. I know that when I'm printing at home on my HP printers, I need to add just a little bit of sharpening to the final result. And this is not me adding in contrast. This is me just adding in that detail type of sharpening. Now, I personally use the progressive. I leave the default settings so I don't get like crazy with it. You're going to have to experiment with your own printer but I pull down the opacity just a touch. And for me, somewhere between 70 and 90 works out just fine. I haven't seen, I haven't been able to see a dramatic difference by pulling it, you know, from 70 to 90. I haven't seen a dramatic difference by moving it anywhere in that range. But uh, if I go too low, then it prints off really soft. So I might as well not have any sharpening. And if I go too high, then my printer has a hard time trying to define those edges in a clean manner. So that's the reason why I leave it somewhere between 70 and 90. It works out just fine for me, but that is an experiment that you'll have to do with your own printer. So now that I have my whites completely recovered, my shadows completely recovered, or at least safe for printing, I'll say it like that. And I've added in sharpening, check my dust spots. This is now ready to be sent off to the printer. This one here is obviously in color, so the process is a little bit different because I do care about how the colors are going to be rendered because that's the whole purpose of having a color image, especially when you put on a preset that on the computer screen, it looks a certain way. And this is the reason why it is so important to, or at least for me, to keep your develop module completely clear. And if for whatever reason, you did have to develop your image in the develop module, I recommend you save that, create a second layer. So you can come to your layers and you can duplicate it. We'll add the layer and then merge these two down by right clicking on the top one and then either hitting new stamp layer or merge visible. What that's going to do is reset your layers so that way you can it'll keep all of your edits, but it gives you a completely new image as if the edited version that you're working on was the image you shot. 
and you can make all of the changes that you need to make and, and uh, it gives you the new develop module. Now I'm going to delete this layer because I don't need this particular one. However, and the reason why I don't need that layer is because I have my develop module ready to go. And this means I can now make the correct edits that I want. And here I have my vibrance pulled up pretty high, which I kind of started working on this. This is the only slider that I actually moved. Uh, but whenever I send a color photo to print, I usually increase my saturation by a few points, even if I desaturated the original image. The reason for that is the color rendering, at least for my monitor, and this is where monitor calibration really comes in. For my monitor, I need to increase my saturation by a little bit just to get a more uh, comparable look to what I've already had on the computer. And then the other thing that I would do is increase my exposure by about a half a stop. Now again, this is for my printer. If you're going to a print lab, I recommend that you do a test and you can do that by asking for a contact sheet and you send, you know, six, seven photos. And what they do is they print them in these little uh, one by one squares. And I'll show you how to get a contact sheet here in a second. But the point is you want to send those out to your print labs just to see how that that file is being rendered on the paper that you choose and, you know, tons of variables. But getting ahead of myself. So now that I've increased my exposure by a half a stop, I like to look at my overall dynamic range. Now, I feel like this area here uh, may not render in the print too well because it just looks too bright and, and washed out. So that's where I'll throw in a little bit of global contrast uh, because if it's happening in one area, I want to keep it even I want to keep the contrast even across the entire image. These are very, very small adjustments. I know 22 seems like a lot, uh, but that's actually a fairly small adjustment for this overall thing. Um, and then I think I'm good to go here. Now, what I like to do on my color images is look at these corners because I did apply a vignette. Now up here, it doesn't really bother me, but this corner down here seems to be just a little too dark. So what I enjoy about on one is that you have these masks. So I'm just going to click on this mask really quick, grab my brush, and I'm going to be on paint out with a low opacity because I do want to darken this corner just a bit and I want to control how I'm painting it in. So I just moved it to 25. Don't worry about the number there as much. And all I'm going to do is take my brush and just paint that away a little bit. And that gives me the ability, like it's going to darken that area, but it doesn't look as dark as it once did. So uh, that's just a personal preference, something you should pay attention to, though, because, of course, anything that looks dark on the screen is going to be amplified when it's printed. And anything that looks bright on the screen is going to also be amplified. Now, what I need to do is check to see if I'm blowing out any of my highlights, which I am not. I'm going to go into my effects and I'm going to add my curves module and just do my quick little tip on preserving the highlights in your image. And then I'm going to add another filter, add some sharpening, go to print, leave it on the default and put it just under 90. Now, when it comes to color photos, for me, I need to have my sharpening opacity closer to 90. That is a difference. All right. Now I'm going to click on retouch and visualize dust spot and I'm not seeing anything, which is great. So I'm just going to close that out and now I'm ready to print this. So now that I have my photo ready to send to the printer, I need to decide what type of crop do I want to actually have this print at. So if I hit the letter C, I can choose my crop factor right here. So 
for my particular project, I'm printing five by sevens. So if I hit five by seven, this now shows me what I can keep in the image and what I can't. And I'll just resize this because I want the entire sign. I'm not worried about the barn so much. So now that I have my photo cropped, I know that it is ready to be sent to the printer. I'm gonna hit done. Now I have both of my images ready to be sent to the printer. And all you have to do is click on the print icon over here inside of on one and you're going to get this screen where you have to make some adjustments i'm going to go through this fairly quickly but i'll answer any questions in the comment section that you have about this the first portion here is just selecting your printer that's going to say whatever your printer is then you have your paper size like i said i'm printing on five by seven borderless paper so I'm just going to click there and you'll see that the preview updates and it shows that it's going to print borderless. Now down here you have your color profile. So if you're printing at home, then I recommend that you leave this on printer manage. Now, if you know that you have a printer that can operate in one of these color spaces, then go ahead and change it to that. But I don't recommend doing it just for the fun of it. The next thing is the print area. And this is where I was saying you can create a contact sheet. So if I click this, you can see it's going to give me one and it's also going to give me the name of that particular file. So you can put multiple files on a contact sheet. You send this off to your printer to see how it's going to render those colors in that file. And then you can go back and make micro adjustments. And these are usually cheaper. This is actually a really good method if you plan to print a high end photo book and you're just not sure if the prints are going to come out the way that you want them to send a contact sheet to the printer ask them to print it on the paper that the photo book is going to be printed on so you can see what your files are going to look like when it's actually printed and then you can make those colors or i'm sorry make those adjustments this is also going to help you see what type of colors you're going to have on your file so I'm going to go back to fill because I want this to be a borderless print, but you have a few different options here as well. Uh, if I wanted to print two five by sevens on a eight and a half by 11 sheet, I could just click here and then this would resize this to five by seven or show me two five by seven. So let me just show that real quick. I only have one photo selected, so it is matting it right in the middle. But if I had multiple photos selected, then this photo would be rotated to the side and the next five by seven would be rotated in there. So that way I would have two five by sevens in this one sheet. But I want five by seven borderless and we're gonna go with fill because I don't want any issue. Now you could add sharpening here. The reason why I don't is because in my personal testing with my computer and my printer, this doesn't actually work so well and I don't have any control over it. So you could add sharpening here and then, you know, change all of these settings for whatever you got. But I personally just leave that unchecked because I know that I've already added in my sharpening. And then all you have to do is hit print and it's gonna go to the printer and then you'll have that print. 